you have to be living in a very strange or foreign country if you're not aware that gin has taken over the space. I mean, gin has become the thing we talk about. Everybody wants to taste gin. Some stuff is happening around gin. But also for me, what is interesting is actually craft gin, but also made, homemade by our own people. And that is why when a few weeks ago, I bumped into a gentleman called Ashley Mwemisi from Distilling Natives, I was like, I got to talk to you, mate. Not only because of the gin, but because it's, an, it's a native thing. It's our own gin. He, they distill it. He'll, he'll talk to us about it. But it's a 100% black-owned business. He's the founder and marketing director. This was started by friends. Yeah, 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 it's amazing. He's going to tell us about this in childhood friends, uh, natives from Harankua, somewhere far away from Johannesburg, uh, somewhere around Pretoria. And they started this amazing business. Ashley is our guest tonight on Talk with Rams, the feature interview, and he's going to talk to us about the distilling natives. Good evening, mate. Thank you for coming. Let's start with the name, distilling natives. Uh, I like people who, who take the mickey out of what <laughs> used to be bad names to us. What's in a name? What's you know? in a name? What's in a name? Yeah. Um, look, uh, first and foremost, native simply means being born in a place. Yes. So we are all natives of somewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're either native South African, native from Limpopo, yeah. native or Harangua, Harangua yeah. native, anyway. Yes. You know, so um, we we were looking for a brand that, that, that resonates, you know, that can speak to anybody. Yes. You know, not just in South Africa, but beyond our borders. But why so gin? native. Why gin? Gin. Um... It's actually a weird story. Uh, native was supposed to be native lager, uh, 2013. So it was going to be craft beer. Craft beer. Yeah. So um, because I had two restaurants, I've always wanted to have an in-house product. Yes. Um, so we did a wine, and then, uh, then we thought the next thing could be a tap, a beer on tap, something yeah. that we could actually um, uh, leverage off. Uh, but I also fell in love with it. The more I, I researched, the more I visited uh, small craft uh, breweries and stuff like that. So I kind of fell in love with the whole craft thing, you yeah. know. And um, when we were ready to uh, start production, um, I kind of had friends um, who owned spas that I had to talk to and say, listen, this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, do you think um, you, we could put it on the shelf and it would sell? And he pointed out to a couple of craft beer brands and he said, listen, I think personally it's a struggling industry. There's too many players. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Maybe think about spirits. Yeah. It took me five days. And in five days' time, we, uh, we started working on gin dressing. Five days? Five days. We started but working you have on gin. But you, you would have had to have some background. It can't happen in five days. <laughs> we didn't have the gin, but we had, we had some idea of which yes. direction we want to go. So um, because I do a lot of research, if, I want, if I'm interested in something, I don't sleep. I yeah. kind of go on every platform and just look for information. Uh, then I found um, a gentleman out in Artis, and uh, <clears throat> it was around half past 11, I sent him a message, I said, listen, um, this is what I want to do, do you do contract distilling? And um, I dropped my phone, I went to sleep, I thought, I'll chat to this chap in the morning, he's probably sleeping. Um, five minutes later, my phone uh, rang, and um, the guy was like, yeah, I do, this. I do contract distilling, what are you looking at, when can we meet, and... Uh, the following day, I was at the distillery and Arte Beers. We were sitting down having a discussion about gin and um, started doing a lot of research around gin, what constitutes gin, what constitutes craft, uh, how do you make gin. I looked at videos from Bombay, from Tangare, how they distill the whole gin. Works. So the whole works. I did my homework. And uh, there's things called the gin wheel. Uh, if you go on Pinterest, you find gin wheels. And if you go on the gin wheel, it will tell you all the flavor profiles of the different botanicals. And By the time I went to see him, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted in the gym. Yes, yeah. so you could lead him to what you wanted. Yes. Before we even get to the flavors, because I, lo I love the kind of stuff we're going to talk about, but yeah. let's talk about what, what is distilling? What are we talking about? What is your business as, as distilling natives? What do you do? What do you make? Okay, so and we, what do you buy? As, as the distilling native, we brand owners, right? Okay. So we own the brand. So what we do is that we sit with uh, a distiller, for instance, or a brewer. Yeah. And we'll say to you, listen, this is the profile we want of the product. This is how we want it to taste. This is what we're looking for. Um, for instance, can I have um, can I have moringa in it? Or can I have honey bush in mm. it? Can I have hibiscus in it? Can I have elderflower in it? Can I have but obviously all of this is research. Yes. Right? And uh, once you've decided on what what would be your main botanical, 
you kind of then give your gin a bit of character and say, oh. okay, uh, I would like a bit of citrus in my gin, you know, and then yes. that would be your lime, your lemon peels, you know, because you don't normally use the flesh, yes. you know, and then you start working on, on that process. And so um, then you come up with a recipe. And once you've got that recipe, our business is more in distribution. Your business is front, front end. Yeah. The other guy is a back end. The other guy is a back end. Buying the service from them but, so that you yeah, can do your brand. Exactly. Uh -huh. But the beauty, of it, it. the beauty of it is that we've had such a good relationship that in 10 months, we've now kind of integrated into the making, the slowly the, doing the distillery tours, explaining to people how we make our gin. Yeah. And so that, you know, for me, is, is a beautiful process because sometimes what we do, we become arrogant and we go buy tanks because yeah. DTI can give you money and so and so can give you money. So and then you set up this whole distillery. Yes. And then you find yourself knee deep in production, making mistakes, costing you money. You know. But also, for me, I always say to people, we also do that because we don't know what our core business is. Sure. And for me, you've just explained what your yeah. core business is. Yeah. Your core business is marketing. It's marketing. creating a brand and marketing. And it. marketing. It. What yeah. happens behind it should not necessarily be your business. Because it shouldn't be, but it would. It, 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 it's something you can it. grow. You can grow into. Yeah. But it's beautiful when you grow into it, understanding. Because what I've come to notice is a lot of people that have taken on clients and do contract distilling, end up, their brands end up struggling. Yes. Because they don't have the time to market their brands. Yeah. The way I put time in marketing my brand. Trust me, yeah. I know. So I don't know what we start with. We start about the gins that you make or we start with these mooties that you brought into studio. Here. I will have to start with the mooties. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the mooties are the base for what we see in liquid form. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, as black people with fashionistas, right? So I always say this is gin raw, not, <laughs> not G-star raw, this is gin raw, okay. right? And then this is the liquid form that, yes. uh, of the finished product. So um, we start, I mean, this is juniper. Most people know, drink gin, but they don't really care to find out anything else. I don't know what gin. makes gin, yeah. yeah. So juniper. Juniper. Juniper berries. Yeah. This is pretty much gin, right? I, so are you saying any gin that I would consume Every, every, every gin has this as a base, right? So, um, you, have, you, you know, the simplest thing lately is to buy in alcohol, neutral alcohol. Yeah. At around 96, 96% alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. And then... Which is not where we prefer it to no, be. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, because in most cases, most distillers get busy. Yeah. You know, instead of uh, creating your own neutral liquor, it's easier to bring in neutral liquor. There are people already doing that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it also cuts down on the time of production, right? So once you've got that, then this is where you start the distilling process, pretty much. Yeah. So juniper would be your main um, botanica. And I would find it here. Yeah. You'd find it in everything, Great. pretty much. I could bring it, all the gins here. They'll all have juniper, right? Yes. So juniper, um, it's, it's a European plant, right? Okay, um, so it's not native. No, it's not native. <laughs> It is native. It is native to in Europe, to yeah. Europe. <laughs> right? So uh, with, with, with Juniper, uh, they used to make a thing called Yennefer, yeah. which was just simple, simple spirit yeah. with, with Juniper in it, right? Um, and uh, it, it's, I think it's from, it's from um, the Netherlands, yeah. right? So this was taken to the UK in the form of a Yennefer, and then it became popular as gin. Right. So, this, so the, 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 the English and this boasting about gin, no, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not it's their not product. Their they made it they've, popular. They've always yeah. done this to <laughs> product. So they made it popular, right? Um, so with gin, I uh, this is most ladies would say, explain to me about gin. I said, this is your face and that's the makeup palette. Oh. We can give it to different so ladies. So you can choose what makeup yeah. here, but the face remains the yeah. same. You can, give it, you can give it to different ladies, but they'll all come out different. Oh. This is why some people say, but gin is a gin is a gin. I yes. said, no, it's not. Once you start crafting gin, then you're giving each product character, right? Each product has its own unique... Yes, the base is the same. Yes. But then from the this base, then you start giving it character. Because if I'm light-skinned, right. I would work better with this. If I'm true with this tone, I would work better with that. Right. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Depending so on the dress I'm wearing. Exactly. Ah. So um, you have a, a variety of um, peels. You've got a variety of uh, spices, peppers mostly. And, um, and a few botanicals that you can be creative with, mm. right? I'll give you an example. With native, we used honey bush. So honey bush from the cedar book, native to the Cape. Uh, so honey bush, in most people drink it as honey bush tea. Yeah. An antioxidant. 
uh, and then it kind of blends the system with it, right? So this, we distill this instead of infusing it. Yeah. So the difference is we, we distill this until it's liquid form. So we don't get the color, but we get the flavor, the earthiness, oh. we get the, 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 um, the character of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the botanical. Yes. We don't say plants, we say botanical. The character of the botanical. Everybody's got yeah. that. So, you know, it's just about their language <laughs> in their business. Yeah. yeah. So in, in, in native, you get 15 botanicals, right? But 15. the main 15. Wow. But the main botanical would be this after the juniper. Yes. That's why we call it native gin, and it's a uh, honey bush distilled, not yeah. infused. Distilled. Because if you don't distill it and you infuse it, you get a tea color. Okay. Which Ember Roche will call Ember. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So... With the culture, you we used hibiscus. So hibiscus, I've heard that word yeah, before. Hibiscus. hibiscus is a flower. Yeah. Um, mostly you go to uh, Hawaii; they wear the hibiscus yeah. flower yeah. in their hair. You dry it. Pretty much all of them you have to de you have to dehydrate them. You know, and then uh, you dry it. But here's the beautiful thing about it: this in about a thousand liter tank will turn it maroon. Really? So that's infusion. So there we infuse. We don't dist we don't distill this yes. first. But also that gives it character. It gives it character, it gives it flavor, yeah. but it also gives it its color. So the pink color that you see was actually a stronger, uh, sort of like a ox blood color. So we kind of decide yes. what color palette we yeah. want in the gin. Also, we didn't want the soft uh, pink. Because with the soft pink and you use tonic, normal tonic, uh, you lose the, the color. You lose the pink, yeah. yes. Whereas in this case, even if we use a 340 uh, milliliter cup, you get a, a, a soft pink yes. color, but the, so, the so color you can still have your pink drink without using, using pink tonic. Without using pink tonic, you see that's a beauty. I know a bit. I know a bit. So in all of this, um, we've got coriander seeds. Yeah. Right. Uh, we've got licorice roots. Uh, licorice sweet. Licorice roots. Yeah. That's a flavor. If you taste one of these at your own time, uh, you'll get that licorice flavor, right? Um, and then here you've got angelica roots, right? So these pretty much kind of help hold all the flavors together and bind. You know, like if you put breadcrumbs in mince, mm -hmm. and the breadcrumbs will keep the mince together yes. so that it doesn't crumble. Oh. That's what keeps all these flavors together so that they don't disappear, right? The angelica, right? Um, and then we've got, which is quite interesting, lime peels, right? That gives it that citrus flavor, right? We've got cassia buck that gives it that cinnamon flavor. And the alu flower. If you have an alu tree and then mm -hmm. the flowers on top, the, that's what we distill, right? Um, and then we've got cubic berries. These are from Java, in the, the native to Java, Indonesia. But these are pretty much in most gins. Okay. That and the coriander seeds. Yes. You'll find in pretty much every gin that you drink, right? May, may I rush you through this? Yeah. Because I want to ask you. Okay, yeah. so, and then here from West Africa, grain of paradise, you'll find it in most gins, lime peels that uh, we, we buy go to the market, skin them, distill them, right? Kalimum, if you have biryani, you bite on this, it yeah. gives you that nasty flavor. And then this, rose geranium. Rose geranium, there's a lady in Bumalanga who plants mm. this and harvests this, and um, she uses this as an essential oil yeah, to it, relax. It does, it, to it relax, does yeah. feel like something I've right. in, in a spa somewhere. Exactly, and then this is the secret. Mm. I, what, that, that's like an African plant somewhere that's very serious. That's why it's the secret. <laughs> so you're not going to tell me about that? No, book. I can that's tell it. you about it. Yeah. It's the secret. It's the secret. <laughs> what? So that's what constitutes native, native culture. That's what, 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 what separates you, though, from what is out there? There's lots in the market. Everybody's starting to drink gin. Even yeah. Freddie does now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, my... My whole thing is how we package it, how we position it, who we're targeting, and uh, what platforms we're targeting. Yeah. And again, the flavor profile. Apart from that, it's, it's pretty much how we position ourselves in the market. A lot of people ask me, uh, who are you competing against? Mm. And my, my thing is, I'm not competing about any, against anybody. I'm running my own race. I've set a path for myself, and that's what I'm taking. You know? I hear that, yeah. and, I, and I'm going to live with it. Yeah. But who are you selling to? Who's your target audience? Have you described this person, how many eyes they have, how yeah. many legs they have, uh, how they walk, where they sit? The funny thing is when we started, my idea was, you know, uh, we've got a whole lot of black people. And sometimes we want to sell to white people to validate ourselves. And um, as the gin was produced and was being sold, you still had a majority black 
peop, uh, uh, black people buying your gin. Yeah. But I still had white clients that would say, wow, that's a beautiful gin. Mm. Send it to me. Wow, that's a beautiful brand. I would like to taste that. So to me, um, uh, my, my client is anybody that, one, loves gin, two, experiments with gin, three, collects gin. Right? Okay. Because that's the beauty of this product is that people don't say I drink a particular brand. People say I drink a particular brand, but I'll collect each and every brand. Yes. And make sure I've got so sort of like some whiskey drinkers, yeah. not all whiskey. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, some whiskey drinkers will collect whiskeys. Yeah. And today I'm in a mood for Lagavulin, tomorrow for this brand, for that brand, and so on. And you find that gin drinkers have become that. Mm. Have become collectors of gin, collectors of brands. What is this? Looks interesting. I haven't tried it. Can I try it? So to me, my market is open. It's open not only in South Africa, I'm also looking into Botswana, I'm looking into Lesotho and Namibia as well. And how do you reach your market? I mean, where do you sell? How do they find this? Um, you know, our biggest, our biggest tool was, uh, marketing tool was word of mouth. Uh, two, uh, the fact that I come from the restaurant industry, yeah. it was easy to go to see restaurateurs and talk to them. Some of them will try to, you know, tell me stories about how they cannot put it on the shelf. And I would explain to them how the restaurant system works. And then... <laughs> That kind of gets me in, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's an advantage uh, in that sense. Um, with the spas that I'm in, it was low-hanging fruits. Uh, uh, individually owned spas, independence, and then they can decide whether they're taking it or not taking yeah. it. And when they're paying me, which is immediate. Uh, which that's how important. we prefer. Yeah, yeah. I would prefer that. <laughs> so my clients have varied from what I had actually initially thought it would be to what the gin has, has manifested. So what I do is I follow the gin right now. Yeah. Uh, and where the gin, where I get the order, I send. So word of mouth, um, social media is big for us. Yeah. Fa Facebook, funny enough, because my kids were like, "Ah, you're old. We don't do Facebook anymore." Mm. I was like, "I'm not selling to your age group." Yeah. <laughs> so to uh, remind them that exactly, there are yeah. four billion uh, people on that. Yes, group. and uh, Instagram is helping. So social media is helping a lot as far as marketing is concerned. Um, so we are on Facebook, the Distilling Natives, and uh, we are on Instagram. You are here, you're based in Gauteng, mm. you say you get into all other uh, uh, countries, other countries. But yeah. is there an opportunity for somebody watching us in Pumalanga right now, in Mozambique, who can say, I can distribute your stuff for you? Oh yeah, for sure. Mm. I mean, that's what we did with Botswana. Yeah. Um, one of the ladies from Botswana came to SA with a whole biker group, uh, they were at Medunsa. I had the bar there, they came, they tasted, they liked, and I was pretty much at about three or four other uh, biker rallies. Yeah. And she said to me, listen, uh, I've got a bar, I've got a distribution license, what can we do? And I said, okay, let's see what we can do. Um, this is the price that I'll give it to you at, considering the fact that then there's a cooler conversion, there's border costs and all of that. And um, uh, we've been in business with her now for four months. And you're happy? Very happy, very, very happy. Finally, uh Ultimately, we still compare on the basis of our pockets. Yeah. What's differential? I mean, how do, I, how do you compete with what is out there in the market? Look, we're very deliberate. Um, when, we, when we started, uh, obviously, like I said, I researched a lot. Uh, a lot of the craft gins were above 400, yeah. some above five. And um, we took a conscious decision to say we're going to be under 400. A um, couple of things that inform it, cost of production, how we, how we distribute, where we distribute, uh, because we're doing mostly Gauteng right yeah. now. Uh, and then, fortunately for us, clients that are outside of Gauteng are willing to pay for, for transportation costs. Yeah. Um, whether we're taking it to Botswana or we're sending it to Lesotho, Lesotho will take it up to Lady Brain and they, they will take it from Lady Brain yeah. and it will cross the border. So we've kind of cut a few a lot of the costs so that we are able to give it to them at a particular price. So and retain the margins. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, margins. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I started with cost of production. That yeah. is very important. How much does it cost us to produce it? And what other costs are involved yes. in the process? And for us, 350 sounded very fair. Uh, and I think uh, it's between what your premium uh, crafts will charge and what's on the market, you know. Well, I have not tasted, and you know the reason I've not yeah. tasted, but I'll give you feedback in about three weeks or so. I'll be able to give you feedback. Yeah. But right. Ashley, thank you so much for this, mate. Give yeah. us the social media platforms where they can find it. Okay. Uh, on Facebook, we are The Distilling Natives. And on Instagram, we are The Distilling Native underscore Ash. There you have it. If you forget, you know where to find it right here. It is at the bottom of your screen. Do subscribe to our platform, Talk With Rams on podcast and YouTube. Social media platforms are all Talk With Rams. Thank you very much for choosing to tune in. Thank you, my brother, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you.